Hi, I'm Rachel, and if you've come for my pretty makeovers, look away now. This one is not for you. However, if you want to see a wooden cabinet given a metal effect, then stick around because this transformation is very cool. I'll tell you in advance, I think this is such a cool transformation. It won't be for everyone. You might not want it in your living room, but if you fancy seeing if you can make wood look like metal, then stick around because it goes through quite a transformation. So this piece was free from FreeCycle and is just a classic TV unit with swing out drawers, which is probably the most interesting thing about it. And because the thing I wanted most to change about this piece is the handles and to use pool spanner handles, the original handles were the first thing that needed to come off because I needed to make new drill holes for the new hardware. And the mouldings on the front were a bit outdated and wouldn't go with my new industrial look so I removed those and all the tiny little nails that went in it which unfortunately did leave quite a few tiny little nail marks to cover up but not a big problem. So first things first was to use my amazing hardware drilling tool which if you haven't seen my video on how to use this it is so easy and convenient for getting hardware straight. You need to measure the spaces between your two holes within your hardware and then line up the ruler against those and then mark where you want those holes to go. Just by adjusting the sliders you make sure that you get the tool straight and therefore the hardware in the right place. I also have this other fantastic little gadget which is called the Marksman and it is essentially like a chalk pen and you press it down and it shoots out a dot of chalk which is great for drilling holes either into walls or in this case through this tool and instead of trying to squeeze a pen or a pencil into that tight spot this does the job brilliantly and as it's chalk you can just wipe it off in case you get it in the wrong place. Once I had my holes marked out I then used the drill to get them in place and after I did that I decided as I was taking off some of the prettier more delicate elements of the TV cabinet I also removed this edge on one of the doors however unfortunately this did rip some of the veneer with it and it took me down to the particle board surface so that did cause me a little bit of a problem but nothing that couldn't be fixed. So also in keeping with giving this a slightly more industrial look, I wanted to change the shape of the base. It originally had this curvy design, so I wanted to make it more solid and box-like. I marked out where I wanted to cut and then cut along the lines with a jigsaw to create this solid look and sanded the edges smooth. Now that I'd done all the structural changes that I wanted to do, it was time to clean the surface. And for this, I used White Lightning, which is a TSP cleaner. And fortunately, the TV cabinet was pretty clean already, so it wasn't too horrible to have to clean up. Once the piece was clean, I then used some wood filler to fill in all those tiny holes left by the nails from that decorative trim on the front and also the handle hole from the original handle. Now because this piece is veneer rather than solid wood throughout, it's a good candidate for using slick stick rather than sanding and slick stick is a product for shiny or laminate surfaces. So I did two coats all over of slick stick and let it dry for 24 hours before the next step. And I love this angled brush. It's got a tilted head where the bristles are and that means that you can get into difficult to reach surfaces, either where there's narrow gaps or where a paintbrush might scrape one of the other sides as you're doing it. So it was when I was applying the slick stick that I saw a slight scratch on the bottom where one of the doors is in place. And this was a bit of a concern because if there is already a slight gouge where the door is rubbing, then any additional layers of paint that I add is just going to make that worse and inevitably the paint will chip because it doesn't have enough clearance space to allow for extra layers to be there. So it was at this point when I was playing with the doors, I was trying to figure out what the best 
solution would be I could either remove the doors so that it was just an open cabinet although that would make it look a little bit boring and also top heavy because of how the sides were placed or I could remove the bottom and sand off a part of each of the doors to give it more clearance. And that is the way I went because I thought it would keep the TV cabinet looking more interesting in general with those extra features of the doors. It was a bit of a process removing the base of those doors but I eventually got it detached. I then sanded around the edges to take off some of the material and then I marked a line around the doors to figure out how much material I was going to take off and then when I was sanding I made sure to only go to that line so that it was evenly sanded across and I refitted the doors just to make sure that they would fit and it did have enough clearance so we were doing well so far but of course I'd removed the bottoms of those doors so I did need to put some new bases back on and I found some spare wood which was thinner than the original that I'd taken off so that it wouldn't sit as low within the cabinet and I stapled it in place. I then did the coats of slick stick on the doors as well to give a nice consistent start for the rest of the makeover. Often a coat of paint will show up more flaws than you could see originally and that was the case with the slick stick. So I did another round of wood filler and for this I used Dixie Mud in white and filled in a few more of those nail holes and also did a second coat on the edge where the trim had slightly ripped down to the board underneath. And because there were quite a few different materials going on, we had the veneer, we had the different base on the doors, the wood filler. I did a coat of primer to give an even surface for the next layer of paint to go on top of. Primer really helps when you've got different surfaces, which can be really visible when you have something like wood filler against wood or different paint as it stands out because the paint will look differently on top of it because of how it is absorbed. So a primer really helps by creating a neutral base for paint to go on top of. And because I was going for a metal look for this TV cabinet, I chose a primer in the colour grey, which would double up as being a good base colour for the future layers to go on top of. I had a few different ideas for how I was going to create this metallic look, but originally I wanted to create layers of a few different metallic colours. So for the first coat of paint I used Stormy Seas, which is dark grey, and brushed it on in a crisscross pattern to create some depth. I left some of the grey primer exposed again to create that variation in the colours. So onto attempt one of creating this metallic finish. I used the brownie grey paint gravel road and applied it to the side of the TV cabinet and then used this textured wood graining tool and dragged through it in straight lines. And just that thin layer of paint created a slight ridged effect, which in my mind was going to be a corrugated iron kind of look. Again, it was just the first coat, so it didn't have to be perfect. And it was starting to look quite cool, but it didn't have quite as much impact as I was hoping. So I went with method two to give those ridges more impact. And I chose some Dixie Mud, which is like the wood filler in black as my base coat across the entire piece. So all of that slick stick, primer, stormy seas, gravel road, texture, Yes, I just covered all of that up, but it's a process. So with the same idea, I used the tool with all those ridges and just dragged down and it created a really thick lined layered look, which I thought was great, exactly what I was hoping for. And the strong black of the Dixie Mud gave it a really good base color as well. I was careful to do this straight on to the piece to keep my lines as straight down as possible as I was going for a fake metal look. Once the Dixie Mud had dried it was a dark grey so it looked great and I'm really happy with the texture that it created, especially where some of the ridges were deeper than others and it created a really interesting variation to look at. 
Then to give it that shiny metallic element, I used two different metallic paints. Steel Magnolia, which is more of a duller silvery grey. I did two tests with this one. One door I did in a speckled pattern and the other I did in straight lines down to see which texture I preferred. And in the end I chose the dabbed on effect more so than the straight down as it created more of a splotchy weathered look. I then put in some highlights with another metallic paint called Silver Bullet. I anticipated actually going back and doing some low lights with some black as well, but there was already so much colour going on that I felt I didn't need that in the end. I didn't add the ridges to the top of the TV cabinet because I thought that would just be inconvenient to have a non-flat surface, but you're most likely to put your drinks or snacks or TV. So I followed the same pattern with the colours just without the texture underneath. Then to seal all these many layers of paints I used clear coat in satin. I chose satin because it is slightly shiny which I thought was perfect for a metallic look. And the moment of truth reattaching those hardwares which inspired the entire makeover and even with all the layers of texture and paint they still fit like a dream fortunately. After assembling it is when I noticed that the original hinges would clash with the silver of the new colour so I also painted the outside of the hinges too so that they didn't stand out too much. And what a difference one or two coats of paint makes. And as I said, I don't think this will be everyone's a cup of tea, but isn't it fun and just quirky and different and so much more interesting than the original brown. There's often a reason why these pieces of furniture are free and it's just because they're not inspiring to anyone and I think somebody would absolutely love to have this quirky industrial faux metallic cabinet in their room. It's pretty quirky and I love it and I hope you do too. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did please consider subscribing and until next time, thanks again, bye! If you're interested in any of the products, I will leave a link to them in the description so you can find out more about them.